Hi there, I'm Michael DiDonato from the Insurance Work and Health Group in the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine at Monash University. I'm pleased to present our new multi-jurisdiction work injury compensation database and tell you about its development and initial validation. I first like to acknowledge the other authors on this project, Professor Alex Colley, Dr. Ross Isles, Dr. Karen Van Vrieden, Ms. Diane Beck and Mr. Luke Sheehan. We'd like to thank our study funders, the Australian Research Council and Safe Work Australia, as well as the organisations who provided their data for this database. The views expressed in this presentation are those of the authors and are not necessarily the views of the data providers or the study funders. Almost a quarter of a million Australians experience a work injury annually and make a benefit claim through one of the nation's 11 workers' compensation systems, one per state and territory and three nationally. The total cost of work disability to Australian society has most recently been estimated at $61.8 billion per annum, or equivalent to 4.1% of GDP. Australian workers' compensation systems collect large amounts of structured data about the claims that they manage and the services that they pay for. Claim level data such as worker demographic characteristics, injury details and total compensated time loss is already compiled nationally by Safe Work Australia. This has been a valuable resource for workers' compensation and occupational health and safety research and is used to monitor trends in work injury prevention and return to work. However, service level data, such as medical appointments, procedures and medicines, sits within individual insurers and regulators and is not compiled nationally. The disaggregation of legislative responsibility between jurisdictions has contributed to a lack of data standards and thus a minimal understanding of the efficiency or effectiveness of service provision in the Australian workers' compensation sector. This project developed a new multi-jurisdictional work disability database, including detailed information on work disability duration, health and social care service provision. This national data infrastructure will support knowledge generation and policy and practice development. In this initial stage, we aim to develop and implement protocols for database development, to establish the initial version of the multi-jurisdictional database, and to conduct multiple analyses of the database and proof of concept studies. We have taken a staged approach to database development. In this first proof of concept stage, we utilised claim and service data from select jurisdictions for select conditions and over a select period. Service level payment data contained in structured workers' compensation insurance claims datasets held by five large workers' compensation jurisdictions was collected for all cases of work-related low back pain, limb fractures and limb soft tissue disease between 2010 and 2015. These jurisdictions provide coverage for approximately 60% of the Australian labour force and the selected conditions represent common work-related injuries and musculoskeletal diseases. Furthermore, this time period allowed for sufficient collection of services data follow-up. In the future, we aim to include more data from these vectors. Over 2019 and 2020, we developed a harmonised database from the five jurisdictions' data, including detailed service-level data on medical treatments, medicines and wage replacement. Within each jurisdiction's database, we performed detailed data cleaning and quality assurance and harmonised services coding. We then merged each jurisdiction's database into this single multi-jurisdictional database. We performed analyses and reported these to the data custodians for feedback to ensure we had interpreted the data correctly. As you can see, this was an iterative process. One of the major steps in the project, highlighted here, has been to harmonise services coding for example, a service such as a doctor's appointment was identified by different codes in each jurisdiction. We first developed our own coding framework for health services. This coding system was based on broad categories and subcategories of health and social services and may be expanded in the future. In the first round of matching, we linked services codes to existing service coding standards. For example, the Australian Department of Health's Medi Medicare Benefits Scheme for Medical Services and the World Health Organization's Anatomical Therapeutic Chemical Code Framework for Medicines. We then fitted codes that matched to existing standards to the appropriate category in our coding framework. Codes that did not match to an existing standard proceeded to the second round of matching. In this step, 
two independent coders reviewed service level codes and assigned them to the coding framework manually. Finally, if these independent coders disagreed, a third coder would arbitrate the decision. We focused our efforts on first cleaning and harmonizing services data that were both common and of relative importance to the included conditions – general practitioner services, medicines, medical imaging and wage replacement. So in our initial multi-jurisdictional database we included over 250,000 accepted claims, over 100,000 of which involved working time loss. We also have the date of service, type of service and service provider for general practitioner services, medicines, medical imaging services and wage replacement. There are over 10 million total service episodes in the database, including over 800,000 general practitioner services, 210,000 medical imaging services and 524,000 medicine prescriptions. Our initial analyses have produced some interesting findings. For example, here we can see the number of general practitioner services per claim for each condition in the database. Here we can see that 27% of limb fracture claims had no recorded general practitioner services, more than twice the percentage for limb soft tissue diseases at 13% and low back pain at 10%. This is apparent in the mean and median number of general practitioner services for each condition, with workers with low back pain receiving almost twice the mean number of general practitioner services than limb fracture claims. This figure represents the proportion of workers who received various modalities of medical imaging for each condition. Approximately 55% of workers with limb fracture received x-ray, diagnostic radiology, 40% of workers with limb soft tissue disease received an ultrasound and 30% of workers with low back pain received magnetic resonance imaging. The volume and modality of imaging is consistent with what we would expect for each of these conditions. This is positive. In summary, we have demonstrated that it is feasible to harmonise service level data across multiple workers' compensation jurisdictions. To date, we have harmonised and aggregated claim level data and service level data on general practitioner services, medical imaging and medicines across five workers' compensation jurisdictions. Initial analyses demonstrate that service use is consistent with expectations. For example, general practitioner services are clustered around the claim lodgement date. There is a higher rate of X-ray in workers with limb fracture than other musculoskeletal conditions and there is a higher rate of magnetic resonance imaging and greater opioid use in workers with back pain than other musculoskeletal conditions. These findings are preliminary, but analysis also shows some interesting trends. There are differences in service use patterns between condition and between jurisdictions. And there are associations between duration of time loss, or wage replacement, and diagnostic imaging and opioid use in workers with low back pain. We will continue to harmonise and merge data by incorporating service level data for physical therapy, psychological therapy, occupational rehabilitation and other common services. We will also continue analyses of service level data with a focus on general practitioner services and weekly wage replacement, with other topics to be determined in consultation with data custodians and study funders. The service level data has allowed us to perform numerous complex analyses that will provide new insight in this sector. Analyses currently underway have utilised continuity of care indices and group-based trajectory modelling. We will also utilise the database in new ventures as part of the Australia and New Zealand Low Back Pain Research Network, NHMRC Centre for Research Excellence. Thank you for your time.